Hi everyone. Um, this is the second video I did on our next little set of things that we're doing for our labs. And remember I told you we're going to try to cover as much and get as much work done on our lab class as humanly possible so that no one has to take an eye. And hopefully we'll be able to get back on campus at some part during the summer and don't fret about that. No one's going to spring anything on you. You'll have plenty of notice. And make sure you watch the other video that deals with chapter seven, or well, a worksheet 17, talking about malaria before you watch this one, because I give you a lot of information at the beginning of that slide uh, that is that is useful. And I'm also going to be sending out an email soon, kind of detailing a lot of this. But we need to really be diligent in watching these videos, reading your chapters, filling out your study guides for lab as well, and getting ready for these lab a test which remember the lab and lecture go together to give you a full picture of what a phlebotomist does a lot of those things go hand in hand things you learn in lab will help you with your lecture test things you learn in lecture will help you with your lab test this all goes in hand in hand and what i'm hoping is in the summer we'll get back in there because the part of lab that you're missing you're getting that knowledge but you're not getting that hands-on hands, hands experience that i want you to have and that you need to be the best phlebotomist you can be. So everybody hold out for that. Make sure you watch the video before this one, okay? Dealing with uh, worksheet 17 and then watch this one because the information at the front is vital. Now, I'm not gonna go over all this time after time. You know, we did this and if we were in lab, we would, but this is a requisition, right? Um, and, and we would look at our requisition. The patient information would already be filled out for us. And the most important job you will do as a phlebotomist is to properly ID your patient. So you would take this requisition form, you would identify yourself, you would um, introduce yourself, tell them where you're from, what you're there for, ID them against their hospital ID bracelet, against their requisition, okay? And then you would look to this requisition to know where your patient is. You would look for this requisition to know what test you're doing on your patient. So let's look at this requisition right now. Like you can pause this. I want to make sure you guys are looking at this requisition and you're knowing how to read it. And I know you do already because we were going through this in lab before the COVID-19 um, stay at home issue. So I know y'all know, but pause it and make sure you're understanding. If, you, if you're not getting it, make sure you reach out to me and let me know. So the doctor ordered what? A WBC, right? And a WBC is one of the tests that's in a CBC, right? And so what section of the lab do we take WBCs and CBCs to? Right, hematology. And remember, hematology also houses your analysis and coagulation, okay? So now, how do we collect this blood? We're gonna collect it from a capillary puncture, a skin puncture on our finger, right? And we went through that in video, the videos previous to this, I did a refresher on finger sticks. Y'all have done finger sticks in labs already, and hopefully this summer we'll be able to do a few more to refresh you on that. But make sure you go through that and you know exactly how to do a finger stick every step of the way, exactly the right way to do it from um, introducing and IDing your patient all the way down to what you tell them when you're done, all the way down to where how to properly dispose of your trash. All of these steps are important and always remember you note your specimen source and anything else you find out on your patient if they are or are not fasting if they're any, on any kind of medication because remember if they're on some kind of anticoagulation therapy they may take longer to stop bleeding than a normal patient we always want to keep an eye on that right so this is the blood collection method and this is a picture that shows you the unapet Okay, now we remember that the UNAPET is a seldom used system of diluting capillary blood for certain laboratory tests. Okay, these are, um, there are many tests that can be performed using an UNAPET, including red blood cell counts, white blood cell counts, platelets. You can do a test for hemoglobin. You can do a reticulocyte count. Okay, it's not usually the equipment of choice for doing any of these tests in a large laboratory, but, um, you may find that some smaller doctor's offices, smaller clinics or hospitals may do this. And always remember, you never know where you may end up working as a phlebotomist 
You never know where your career may take you, your schooling may take you. A lot of veterinarians' offices use the UNAPET to do lab results on their animals there. So we, all, we also know that there's some very sophisticated automated instruments that are used to do WBCs, hemoglobins and hematocrits and complete blood counts in large hospitals and laboratories. But we always wanna be familiar with this method because you never know when that machinery may go down and a physician may ask you to do this and I want you to be familiar with the process. So pause this and look at each one of the, the section three parts of this um, on a pet from the bullet shield, which is also used to pierce the membrane that resides right in here. There's a little membrane to keep this diluent fluid from coming out and you use the tip end of this, you turn it over, stick it in there and break that membrane so that then once you collect your blood in your capillary pipette, you can get it down there in the diluent. We'll go over that because this is plastic this plastic reservoir here is plastic and it's easy for you to squeeze it together. We'll go over that, how, what that's about later. And also, I will be putting up a video on YouTube showing you how step by step somebody actually doing this on a pet. OK. So after you dilute, dilute your blood in your on a pet, you place it on the hemocytometer. OK, it's a slide for counting blood cells. You'll see there's a grid right there, over there to your um, to your right, right there at the top. And if you see the little blue lines that go down, the the lab tech that's holding with the blue glove on it's holding that uh, that frosted odd looking slide. That's the hemocytometer, and that's the grids you see when you look under the microscope. And then you would use one of those little, if you see the little round silver counter over there to your right hand side kind of in the middle above the microscope that's the counter that you would use and hold in your hand to punch each time you saw one of the cells that you were counting so so the grid is visible under a microscope and it's used for counting the cells right and then the four large squares okay in blue right there that you see at each corner are used for counting the wbc's and then the five smaller squares, it's kind of circled in red, in the center are used for counting the RBCs. And if you'll see, there's also that picture of somebody um, obviously putting some diluted blood onto that hemocytometer slide. And they're using that on a pet system we just saw in the previous um, picture doing that. And like I said, we're going to have some more slides showing you how to do it and we'll have a video up later. So also make sure guys you're going out the pages may be off it's page 84 in the white lab binder that I have now you could be the pages could be off of the ones you have but it's going to be pretty close that's chapter 9 chapter 9 in your white lab binder because remember your white lab binder not only has appendix A that you need to be studying for your test it not only has your case studies which you guys have been filling out and sending in to me thank you very much for that it also has chapters that you read and at the back of each one of those chapters is study guides that you fill in based off the information that you read. So make sure you're reading chapter nine and chapter 10 and filling out the study guides in the back. Re watch these videos and get, because these are getting you ready for your next lab test, okay? So the manual WBC is a highly complex test according to CLIA. Filling the pipette correctly is difficult. Remember what I told you, first you puncture the membrane at the neck of that reservoir by forcibly pushing that bullet shield through it, okay? And you'll see that kind of picture of, um, well, that wouldn't really have a picture of that, but like I said, I am gonna show you a video on this. So once you do that, you perform your finger stick according to the procedure that you know is correct. Then, and you'll see this picture right here where that red line is pointing up to A, you hold it horizontally and you feel the pipette to the exact location on the neck. All right. And you want to make sure no air bubbles are in there, right? No air bubbles are allowed. It needs to be that full. And we've talked about getting air, bubble, air bubbles in when you're doing capillary sticks, okay? 
So uh, if it's underfilled by even a hair, it will falsely lower the blood count by hundreds of cells. For this reason, no air bubbles are allowed, right? If overfilled by even a hair, it will falsely increase the blood count by hundreds of cells. And we don't want, we, we want to make sure we collect it properly. And we take our time to make sure this is done spot on because we want to give out the valid result, okay? So, and remember, the procedure for doing this is lined out in, um, in Chapter 9 as well. So you guys read over this because it talks about the pipettes must be the pipette must be rinsed with the fluid from the reservoir to make sure that all the blood comes out of that capillary pipette and gets down into that reservoir. Okay. So once you uh, once the pipette is filled, you wipe the outside of the pipette with with some chem wipes or gauze. Even the tiniest amount of blood can add hundreds of cells to the cell count, and we already discussed we don't want that, right? And then. You squeeze the reservoir to create a vacuum before inserting the pipette tip down, okay? The tip that you were hold that you were collecting the blood on, tip down, put your finger over the other end of it, okay? Just like we talked about with a straw, right? So you're gonna put your finger over this tip right here, right? And then this end of it down here, once it's collected with blood completely. With blood wiped off the outside, no bubbles on it, okay? Then you turn it over, and you'll see this picture right here, okay? The one right here. You, with that finger over the edge, with your, uh, with your, you squeeze your reservoir in, and then you put it down into the reservoir, avoiding touching the neck of the reservoir, okay? Then once it's down in there, you can release both your finger on the outside and your fingers on the side of the reservoir and it will suck that blood from that capillary down into the diluent. Then again, we wanna rinse the pipette several times until the blood is no longer visible in the pipette, taking care not to allow any fluid to escape. So you wanna be very gentle when you do it because you don't wanna shoot that blood or diluent out the top, right? Then. You seat the pipette firmly into the reservoir with the tip of the pipette down and you paste the sh bullet shield securely on top of the pipette to transport it to the lab. It's inverted eight to ten times once you get all the blood down into the diluent and make sure that that caps on it. And then you properly label it with the basic six or you put your label that comes off your requisition, you peel it off and put that on there. Okay. And remember, it's important to label all your stuff after your blood has been drawn. And remember, no air in that capillary tube. So now moving on to differential blood smears from fingers, okay? Again, here's another requisition that we have. You know, slides are always made first when you're doing finger sticks, okay? Now, to, when we were in lab, we may do something different, but out in the real world, the slides are, no matter what you're doing, if you're doing a, a CBC with a diff, um, if you're doing anything that requires you to make slides, you make those slides first, okay? Now, your requisition would already have all the patient information. We've been over that because it's very important for you to make sure you properly ID your patient and that your requisition has all its information correct. If not, you need to stop doing what you're doing and get with somebody on making sure this stuff gets straightened out, okay, before you stick your patient. So what test did our doctor order today? Reticulocyte count, right? What section of the lab does it go to? Hematology, right? So how would we collect that blood? Okay, we would do a finger stick, right? We would do a finger stick. And guys, make sure you're going through that finger stick over and over again so you make sure you know every step in order how it's done from A to Z, okay? So we would make sure, uh, so we're gonna do a blood smear from a finger stick. So um, we want to review because if you, you should have watched the video on, on 17 first, which already went over this, but what does a good blood smear look like? A good, a good blood smear has a smooth, even surface. It's not wavy and all that. It goes from thick to thin. It ends in a nice feather edge and it covers about 
one half to two thirds of the slide. It is not too thick or too thin overall. And there's a really good picture of what that slide looks like. Okay, but again, guys, make sure you're reading. Like I said, it should be around page 84 in your white lab binder. Make sure you're reading all of chapter nine and filling out the study guide at the end of that. And then make sure that you're also, and it should start around page 92, chapter 10 on glucose testing and winged infusion sets. Make sure you're reading that chapter and filling out the uh, study guides in the end and then watch these videos because these will help you put everything together, okay? So if we would have been in lab, you would have showed me these things. And remember, you have to properly put the basic six on your UNAPET or you would, if you were out in the real world, you might pull a label off and apply that label to it when you make your two good, good blood smears. And remember, if you got, if they ordered a differential, it's two slides. So you really need two, right? Because you're going to need the two, two slides that you're going to put your drop of blood on and then your two slides that you're going to make your smears with. And you will put your patient's full name on there, the date that you do it, which if it was today, it would be today's date and your initials as the phlebotomist that does it. And remember, every time we're in lab, proper PPE, proper disposal of our waste, cleaning our areas, do, taking care of these things is vitally important. And I know that y'all hear it in the news every day dealing with COVID-19, how important it is to wash your hands, how important it is for healthcare workers to have the it is to keep surfaces clean okay so again I'm going to put a few more videos all dealing with our chapters our um, our lab worksheets that deal with chapters 9 and 10 but please 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 we read those chapters in your white lab binder fill out your study guides and start studying you guys have a great day stay safe and healthy